Good morning. I had an, a really unusual day yesterday. I went to a bar mitzvah and I met a man, Joe Engel. Some of you may know him. He used to have a, um, a laundry mat, a uh, dry cleaning service downtown when we were young. He is 92 years old and he survived the Holocaust. He was on his way to be exterminated and he jumped out of the train into the snow. It was a, an honor to stand next to him. Of course, I had my picture taken too. It was really something. And he fits in with the reading because at the time he jumped out of that train, he was as insignificant as this woman in the gospel. The readings all fit together. And the first reading is as if you repent, your sins are as gone as if they never happened. And if you make your way towards God, he will provide for you, part the sea, put rivers in the, ocean, in the desert. He will provide for all of us. And he has provided for everyone in this church. We should all be thankful for whoever it was or whatever happened that makes us continue this journey like we're doing this morning. And then we move to Paul, St. Paul. There was a time that Paul was going in the wrong direction. Paul did far worse things than the woman in the gospel. Paul was there when St. Stephen was stoned. He approved of it. The, but even Paul in his journey, he says that he has not yet reached maturity, perfect maturity. He's still on the way. He's still sinful. Even later in Romans, he writes, I still do things I should not do, and I still don't do things that I should. It's an, it's an ongoing journey, and we're in the middle of that journey just like everybody else. The woman, as I said, is simply a pawn, an insignificant person. Women are really still, in some ways, second-class citizens. And she was a sinful woman. She did something sinful. And then Christ begins to write in the sand. And he said the mo one of the most famous statements in the Bible, you who is without sin, he who is without sin casts the first stone. The big question for all of us, I'm sure of it, is what was he writing in the sand? What did he write in that sand? Wouldn't you love to know? I would love to know what he wrote in the sand. If Christ wanted us to know what he wrote in the sand, it would be in the Bible. It would be there. He doesn't want us to know. He wants us to contemplate it. He wants us to think about it. Here we are, if we identify with the ones who want to stone the woman, what would he have to write in that sand for me to not stone her? What would he have to write for me to not continue with that capital punishment? I have two ways that you can go with this. The first thing is he could write about the woman, her circumstances, why she should not be condemned. Was she coerced? Was she bribed? Was she doing this to save the lives of her children? Was she poor? Was she starving? Did she even know that that was wrong? Because there were things that Paul did that he did not know were wrong, which is why Stephen said, forgive them, Lord. He doesn't know what he's doing. Those things will bring mercy to you, to realize the struggle of the woman. But I surmise that Probably more likely, he wrote the sins of the stoners, the people that wanted to stone her. Because I know when we look into our hearts, because our sins, although they're forgiven, they're before us always. And when we look into our heart, we know that we want mercy. We know that. We cry for mercy. And as we do that, as we have those regrets, we're filled with the divine mercy. And you can't 
continue to hurt someone once that happens. You'll be merciful towards her. I'm not saying that we should never punish anyone, even though, as far as punishing, I mean that no one should ever be incarcerated, okay? But the reason you do that is to protect the innocents because you don't know what happened. You don't know what's in their heart. You don't know what caused all of this to happen. If you look into your heart and you let God bring his divine mercy in there, you will feel merciful toward them because a Christian is merciful. To be a Christian is to be a merciful, a merciful person. And a Christian never throws stones.